Hey guys, how's it going? So we are finally doing a full garden tour today. So end of July almost, uh, we had an overcast day, which has been a total gift. It's still really warm and kind of muggy out here, but yesterday it was 102 and full sun. So we thought we got to get out here. It's like now or never. And I do have to preface this whole thing by saying there is a ton of work going on around here, both on our property and on the house being built next door. You'll see, we'll show you like it's, the roof is up and the walls are up and it seems really close right now until we get used to it. But I just wanted to say there's a lot of construction noise in the background. We have gravel work being done on our new property and there's a landscape crew putting in some brick edging that we meant to have done earlier this spring, which I've showed you. We still haven't even planted the linden trees over there by the gazebo because we were waiting for that to be done. So I'm really excited about it all, uh, but it's just bustling with activity, but there's a lot of beautiful things to see. We wanted to start right up here by our front entryway because I think this is my favorite planting we've just about ever done up here. It's just very soft and very, it feels full, um, but it doesn't feel like too much in some, in some way, if that makes sense. I also like, like the gonfrina last year was amazing, but it got so monstrously huge and it was coming over the sidewalks, which, you know, I like to find borders. I like the tidy edges and so, it was a little bit more wild than it looks this year. But in these uh, cutouts up here, we've got the Angelonia, it's Angel Face Steel Blue. And it's a beautiful lavender color. They have just been blooming their heads off ever since we planted them and they have like really thickened up. This is really my first real experience with planting these in the ground and I'm really happy with them. We have planted Supertunia Mulberry Charm which out here, it's actually showing some water stress. Um, these are watered by our grass sprinklers, so we're gonna have to modify that. Um, these are looking great. And also like the lemon coral and the Supertunia Mulberry Charm stay very compact as well. They don't kind of sprawl out quite as much, which gives things a little bit more of a tidy appearance. The Atlas Roses. You guys, I cannot say enough good things about this rose. Uh, of course, it's like my color. I love this apricot peachy color. I like multi-petaled roses like this, but I love it when you can see the center and you can see just how beautiful the construction of this flower is. And they have lulled once, so they came out, bloomed thickly and gorgeous for a long time. Then they lulled, had a few, just a few sporadic blooms and um, they were never without color, but now they've come back into like beautiful. I need to do some deadheading, but even when I don't do deadheading, I think they look beautiful. Um, so we've got, I think, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six in this swoop. Got a couple of nine barks back here, which we planted last year. You might remember before we did a tour last June, I planted an evergreen and I couldn't find exactly what I needed. It ended up picking up one at a box store. It was kind of sick in its can, but I needed something there. It ended up pretty much dying, so that's gone. I'm thinking some kind of gorgeous, really small ornamental tree, like a beautiful crab apple or something like that would be really pretty right here, but I haven't decided yet. Also, this limelight hydrangea, I transplanted this from the side of the house where the new AC unit went in, and it was very small and very, uh, it had a little bit of a hard time because this is so full sun when the sun is out, um, but it's looking so beautiful and almost just like the other ones on the other side. But before we move over there, the hollyhocks, you guys. And I don't know, like, I'll probably not go through each plant and every single flower bed, otherwise this would be like an all day long video. But this makes me so happy. I love hollyhocks. Um, these have lasted longer than, it seems like my other ones are petering out faster. Um, I actually like this burgundy kind of color up here. I think the depth is beautiful, but they seeded themselves here. So we just went with it and left them alone. And I just feel like it's very charming and it's very pretty for like this old farmhouse entry. We get a lot of questions about this railing. Our uh, previous owners of this house had this custom made by a local artisan. Um, so anyway, I can't like link to somewhere where you can get it. We've thought about having the same sort of thing built for our back sun porch. I think that would be really beautiful to mirror it, but um, because he's still here working, doing his thing, so I'm sure he could uh, come up with something identical for the back. Uh, right here we've got some boxwood topiaries. Typically I plant stuff below and I decided this year to keep it simple and I'm glad I did that because every year I always feel like it becomes a little bit too much and there's too much thing, too many things going on and I just really wanted to pare it down this year and I think it looks really kind of like a, uh, I don't know, a really simple weight for this whole area. So I think I actually wanna go this way to the Versailles garden 
we'll just kind of look at a few things along the way. Um, up there by the front arbor, you can see the sedum. Just have to point this out because these are just like random perennial beds. There's just, there's lots of different things going on. Um, right here, we just cut back hardy geraniums and unearthed a gopher mound that I need to take care of. Um, but typically like this is, I think these were, these are Magnificum, maybe Johnson's Blue anyway. Beautiful, they fill up this whole area. Um, so that was really pretty and they are starting to come back. The tree peony here is doing real well. It bloomed beautifully this year. Um, but you can see like the late summer, early fall stuff is starting to come into its own. We've got some beautiful lilies here. And the sedum, I love this clump of sedum right there. I think that's so pretty. The structure of it is beautiful and that's one plant. Which is always amazing to me. There's day lilies and yarrow and lamb's ear. Just some really fun, oh, and a weed, see? Look at this. How do they get this big before you notice them? Sometimes they even get bigger than that. Just how it goes. Recently planted up this bed in order to incorporate this lungwort here. I love how this is looking. I think it's such a pretty area and there's like hardly any blooms and it's just still so interesting and full of color. The spiderwort still has some blooms on it. This big grass is called a miscanthus cabaret. For those of you wanting to know, this is one grass and they're one of my faves. Now, I always say every year I'm gonna preventatively stake up around it and I never do. So it's always like really big and out onto the sidewalk, which it's got a beautiful form. Let's go through this way. We've recently done some cutting back in this bed. This is typically full of salvia, uh, Jupiter's beard, there is a coral berry in here I planted last year that's looking really good. Like it'll be full of pink berries. This is the, is it proud berry? Anyway, super healthy. I love the leaves on this plant. They look almost eucalyptus like. And then that's where all the berries will be. So it's got some really sweet blooms on it right now. Yeah, so this bed just you know, midsummer when you go in and cut back a bunch of your perennials, that's kind of what's going on here. It just was recently cleaned out. Um, the Jubilee Celebration roses are kind of in one of their lulls right now. There are buds all over on them, so we'll get more color here soon. Beautiful. Russian sage right here. Now, I planted a red obelisk beech tree. <sighs> Has it been two years now? It's not doing well. I think I'm going to take it out. It just it gets nailed by our grass sprinklers and I've looked at it and I cannot figure out a way to not have the grass sprinklers hit this spot right here while still hitting the grass properly. Um, so it just gets crusted up with hard water and it doesn't, I don't think it has a chance to breathe. So I think I will probably remove that in the end. And then in this area back here, we just planted some flocks, which very quickly, I think we kind of shocked their poor little systems. It was so hot when we planted them. We're gonna go in and kind of deadhead them up, but they've got new buds all over, so I'm sure we'll get more blooms. And this spot, we're just working on filling up. I have a bunch of foxgloves in here, um, some David Austin roses. There's, this is the Camelot mix foxglove right here. We never mulched this bed in the spring, so we can see drip tubing in here still, and it's one of those areas that you can't really see unless you come up like this on it because of the boxwood hedge in front. This is a Norway spruce right here, which eventually will get like, I think it said 10 to 12 feet, something like that wide. So I know eventually I'm gonna have to move this stuff, but they're kind of a slow grower, but it's a super cute evergreen and it looks beautiful in the winter. We've got Queen of Sweden roses here. There's three of them. And then this is a plant that I don't think I've really even talked about much, but I feel like it's underused. This is a Dervella. Ooh, I'm stuck on the rose, hold on. There we go. It's a Dervella called Kodiak Orange. When it comes out in the spring, the leaves, like it almost looks like it's autumnal. Like it's just like kind of yellowy orange, beautiful. They've got these dark colored stems, almost like a dogwood right there. And they don't require as much water as a dogwood, which is awesome. Um, but they bloom too. You can see some remnants. Look at that. And they were just covered. I mean, you can see all of the spent blooms all over the top of this plant. And I have three of them here around this June snow dogwood, and I've really enjoyed them. And I had never really had much experience with the Dervella shrub. I have some Kodiak black that I wanna plant somewhere in this garden as well. And then we've got a totem pole panicum, which these, when they're mature, they can get like up to seven feet tall. 
like a super beautiful vertical accent. Of course, right now it's like what? It's topping out at maybe like five feet or something like that, the very tips, but the bulk of it's at about four feet at this point. I just planted that one last year. I am dealing with a little bit of chlorosis. Well, I'm dealing with a lot of chlorosis in this whole garden, but in this particular area, my oak leaf hydrangeas, like I treated them with iron tone, um, and then we are gonna come along with soil acidifier. Oh, Aaron already did. So they have been like double prong approach. They've had a couple of different treatments of iron tone then. And um, so we should see some improvement next year. They'll probably be a lot better than this. The area around the urn is my favorite too this year that we've ever done. You can see the denim and lace Russian sage is looking amazing. Um, it's one of my favorite perennials. It's a shorter growing Russian sage. So, you know, traditional Russian sage, I have some right there we just walked by wants to get pretty tall and they can tend to flop. Um, most of the time when they're flopping, it means they're not getting enough sun or they've got too much fertilizer, they're in too rich a soil. They don't want good treatment at all. They're like a t plant that wants abuse. So if you have like really crummy soil, really hot area in your garden, this might be a good option for you. And the fact that it doesn't get so big makes it easy to tuck in areas, but just covered in honeybees right now. Covered, it, they're just, it's an amazing plant. And then around the base, we planted superbena, su I almost said superbena, <laughs> superbena sparkling amethyst, and then the truffula pink gomfrina. And I think it's just a really sweet blend of flowers. And then I also planted, you can see back in here, which I thought might be a waste when I initially planted it, the meteor shower verbena there. But I feel like it just amps up the display of purple. It's a slightly different tone than the Russian sage. It will also last longer. The color on these and the blooms will last longer than the, than the Russian sage. So when this starts to kind of fade a bit, this one will pick up, or not pick up, it'll just still look awesome and it will kind of carry us through the rest of the season. Also, the sprinter boxwoods. You guys, so amazing. Do you remember when we planted these? They were like this big and it's been, is this their third year? Yeah, this is their third. We planted in the first fall we were here. This is the fourth growing season we've been here. So that, yeah, this is their third growing season. <laughs> okay, I had to work that out. Anyway, amazing. Not a single, like the, the winter after we planted these was the winter we got 52 inches of snow. So like, trying to think of where, <laughs> like a ton of snow and not a single broken branch on this, these plants. No winter damage. They were like suffocated for a long time under that snow and they just have, grown beautifully and they don't bronze out in the winter like winter gems which is what we have along the perimeter of this area so they stay a lot more green around persephone we planted the supertunia indigo charm vista indigo charm oh and look at this a big purslane this is actually an edible people eat the greens i don't i don't think it's they're very good i try to keep these out of the garden these will like take over if you let them go and this area is particularly prone to purslane, but we've got the Vista Mini Indigo. I think it used to be a charm and it has been moved to be a Vista because of its growth habit. And then the Supertunia, um, help Mini me. Vista Mini Vista Pink Star. They're both doing really well. I mean, this area gets all overhead water from sprinklers. Um, it gets water every single day. So not everything we've put up here has actually done really well. They have to be able to handle that amount of water. And these are holding up real well. Like. I don't see any yellowing uh, leaves or anything like that yet. And like one year we tried limoncello and Bordeaux. Those weren't as great in in-ground. And I think you just like we- I was watering too much back then. Oh, were you? Aaron said he was watering too much back then. But I also feel like the Vista series just can take more. That could just be my experience, but like Vista bubblegum, Vista silverberry, Vista paradise, Vista snowdrift. It feels like they can handle a little bit more adversity in the garden and these are both vistas so anyway i think we should hop out and take a look at the front of the gazebo uh, you can see the landscaper that's where they're working so uh, you see the pavers in here they were here when we were when we moved in we couldn't see them because there was privet hedging that was so overgrown uh, they were all kind of buried so we unearthed those when the privets were taken out we are going to get rid of those we have friends that are actually they come and take little bits as they need them for projects so they're being reused and then we're going to do a brick border in here eventually. But uh, that's the kind of paver that was over there lining the road. And we lifted the, all those up and they're putting in a brick border like I'll show you on our west side that lines our driveway. 
um, just to keep a distinction between flower bed and driveway. It's gonna look really good. And then we can plant our trees, which will be fun. I was waiting for that because I wanna make sure my measurements are right and all that business. And we did a little bit of shifting of the, the border. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Benjamin must have been out here. He's got his trucks all lined up. He likes to fill, usually fill up the, the backs with rocks and drive them around on the bench when we're out here. He actually was playing here while we were working on the tree, the split locust tree, which looks great. It's been cabled now for several days and it still looks good. We haven't killed it yet. I'm really hoping it, it survives. Um, you know what, before we run this way, we should just take a quick look at the pots. I feel like, do you feel like this year has just been like all the combinations, it feels like everything, it's the best, it's the best year. It's probably because we have good help. Like we have, you know, we have Chris out here um, who's been helping us with maintenance. And so he's been helping by keeping things fertilized, spraying BT for budworms. And he's been able to keep on it on more of a regular schedule than I ever was because we were too busy. Um, and it's just, it works wonders when things are, you know, taken care of consistently. I still haven't planted these pots. This is what I planted last fall. <laughs> like everything I planted last fall is still in here. I've got hellebores, ivy, some violas still, and I just, whatever. I kind of like them. They're a little bit tonal. There's not a lot of color or pop to them, but it's kind of nice to have something peaceful because there's a lot of color within this, this garden and out here. So we've got these containers looking awesome. Um, the skyrocket penicetums, since we trimmed the supertunias, are showing a lot more growth. Like if you take a look down the line, you can see grass showing up in most of the pots. Like they're starting to put on their seed heads and looking really good. But I do need to get out here and deadhead the, the uh, geraniums. I've only done it twice this whole season. Super easy, I just need to spend some time doing that. Um, but I really like the colors, I like the combination here. Uh, we might need to back off on water a little bit. They're looking a little bit yellow and I don't think it's chlorosis. I think we have upped the water recently because it got so hot so fast and I think that they maybe didn't even need it, need us to do that. So anyway, I'll pop those back in there. Super happy with this whole line of pots. So we'll just peek at what they're doing. See they're pushing, pulling gravel back and then they're gonna start building the brick edging starting right here, which is where, you know, all the pavers led right up to here. So we'll have a nice brick border and they're actually widening the flower beds by about two feet all the way down to our pergola. They do amazing work. That's who came in and did all the brick pads for our pots. They did the big brick pathway on the west side, the one this spring with the circle and the big one on the other side. That's an amazing crew of guys. And they make jobs like that look easy. I don't know how, like, I guess when you have the big machines and things like that and the right tools, it's a lot easier, but they're also very gifted. I think it takes that. Aaron and I don't do projects like that very well. The grass is looking good, probably the best, do you think? Because usually by this time we've got some brown patchiness. We've got a little bit. I am noticing some clover come up um, in some areas that I'll have to address. Um, but overall, it's staying really nice and deep green. This bed here, I always love this. It's always an abundance of hostas and columbine and lamium. Um, there are some iris that always get whipped by the the uh, mower and the wing, winged weeder, or not winged weeder. I want to call the trimmer. I almost said whippersnipper. <laughs> some people call it that, it's funny. Anyway, um, by Burnham right there, and then of course the huge big birch tree that's gorgeous. We need to clean out the gutters though real bad. It always drops a bunch of stuff in the gutters right there. Um, I particularly wanted to look at this space here because I think it's looking really nice. So we repeated the Supertunia mulberry charm in a lot of different areas. It was kind of like my big color for the year. I really wanted that because I've had such good luck with it in containers and things in the past. Um, the Boscobel roses are coming back into bloom. There are buds all over on them. That's so pretty. It's like a peachy pink color. And this whole area just looks like it's filling in. Serendipity alliums right here. Wonderful perennial. I showed you guys these when I planted the annuals in this spot and they were just budded up. So now you can see them at this stage, they're not even open, like they're just starting to open, barely. So they're not even full bloom stage. We've got an elm tree growing right here. That's no good. Gah. And echinaceas called yellow my darling. 
meteor shower verbena, purple fountain grass, some super blue angelonia. That's this one right in here. I'm real happy with it. I think it's real pretty this year and soft. Um, on this side, we have this salvia rocking. Um, is it blue suede shoes? I think blue suede. It's the one I planted here last year. This came back from last year, an annual salvia. That's never happened to me before, so I left it, even though it doesn't go with my scheme this year. Um, and Aaron hasn't pulled it out yet. He pulled the sunflowers out that were in this area, which in all honesty probably looks better to not have those big kind of, they looked a little bit weedy compared to everything else going on. I do need to come in and trim back these carding mill. They've shot up some random big shoots that I, like canes that I don't want. And you can see the main, like the main foliage canopy here where the blooms are. So I'll cut all of those back. Sweet Romance Lavender was a new addition. Little hedge there leading in. Uh, and I think that that was a good solution for this area. I really just wasn't digging the, I had some inkberry, so inkberry hollies right here that weren't doing great. I didn't really like them in the beginning. Um, sometimes it takes a while to figure it out. I like this view here. That's always kind of a fun, different look. We've got the lemony lace elderberries here which have just, like, they're in a lot of shade. So you can see new growth is a little lighter. If they get more sun, they are like lemon yellow. Um, and they are in the spring because in the spring, somehow they get, it seems like they get more sun even though they're under pine trees. Um, it could just be their newly emo uh, emerging leaves are brighter, but they always kind of deepen out a bit. And I like it. I think it's a really soft look here. We've got Brunnera underplanting, underplanted. I need to do a little bit of canopy lifting so that these aren't as smothered. You can see that right there. And then around the front side, we have hookahs and autumn frost hostas. Now this area, these poor plants, I thought when we planted these um, that they didn't get as much sun as they do. And they get that brutal, like the last part of the hot part of the day, like six, I would say like 6 p.m. maybe on, they get that hot afternoon sun and these poor hostas like, they live every year, but the poor things start doing this every year. So I really should dig these up and move them in the interior somewhere where they're getting more shade because I'm not doing them any favors. Autumn frosts are beautiful plants when they're not put in full, full, full sun. Um, we'll just kind of pop back in here a little bit and take a look. This bed is always beautiful to look through because I love looking through the canopy of the Japanese maple that kind of red glow. There are some hydrangeas in here, a lot of hostas. This was my hosta recovery bed last year after the bad hailstorm. I dug a lot of them out and brought them back here and kind of filled up this area just to, I don't know why I did that, just to kind of condense all the damage to one spot as best I could. But it ended up being a real pretty thing, I think. The uh, Virginia creeper here has outdone itself this year. It's just like, I love it. I don't want to, I mean, we've done a little trimming to keep it up a little bit, but I love this. I love having these hanging down a little bit. It's going to be full of gorgeous berries for floral arranging later on. I never got to trimming these boxwoods this spring. So I want to keep these very tightly spherical. And then it got too hot and I ran out of time. So I just thought it's fine. I'll do it um, early this fall when I come back through to tighten up all the boxwoods will come in and shape these up really nice. And that way we have some nice sturdy structure right here. And then we can have the more kind of fluffy plant plants. These are the summerific hibiscus that we planted. Very awesome, I think. All butted up, look at this. That one's gonna open and they're huge. Like they've grown, oh, wait a minute. Hold on, there's a bloom. Hold on, sweet peas. I planted these this winter as an experiment. They were all supposed to be salmon pink. <laughs> I must have got a hold of a package that was mislabeled because they're like all colors and they look really um, beautiful and wild, which is not something I usually do in containers, but I kind of like it. But this is what I saw. First one open. That looks awesome. We won't go too far into this area just because they're working, but you can see the red noodle beans on Benjamin's teepee. I hope you can see those. They're like, I don't know, 18 inches tall already. 
um, and looking great. And all the perennials in this area, like the Nefofia, that's the Flashpoint Red Hot Poker. And they've gotten huge and beautiful. And then uh, this was the Skylands Oriental Spruce. I think we're gonna take it out completely. It just, it, the last two years, it hasn't been doing really well. This year, the whole like top two thirds looked really bad. It had completely browned. So I lopped it off because the bottom looked pretty good still. And I thought, well, I'll just let it stay for a little while and see what happens. But I think whatever was wrong with it is happening to the rest of the plant too. And I just think I'm gonna put something different in that space that can maybe take more sun. I think those oriental spruce that have the yellow coloring in our area need a little bit more protection from the afternoon sun. And I think that that's, that could be what was going on. But you can see here, this is what the guys, they're gonna bring the brick border. Those pavers came all the way up to this pergola. So they are gonna bring them all the way here. I think it'll look really awesome to have something like more permanent and tidy. I did this side. <laughs> Theirs will look much better than mine. I think this is looking really beautiful though. I love it. We can walk through this way. Got a pinky winky hydrangea standard in bloom. It's actually looking pretty good. It was showing some chlorosis still a little bit, but Aaron and I have both treated most everything. So that everything's had two treatments and a lot of things are starting to bounce and show a little bit of recovery. This area has just become so full. We've got uh, Brunnera down here. Look at that silvery pop. It's so pretty. The succulent arrangement's doing great. Put that together, I don't know, maybe two months ago or something like that. Just looking awesome. This is borage that self-seeds itself every year. I planted maybe like three, four inch cans right in here a few years ago. And um, it was before we even had the chicken coop, actually. It was when we still had the big mounded roof of the root cellar there um, and I just love that it comes back every year it's got the sweetest blooms um, the roses this is the zephyrine roses look at how wild so I just showed this to you in the tour of the front of this area <laughs> and um, mentioned that I had not touched these climbing roses all year and I still haven't so maybe maybe one day this week I'll get to it maybe maybe a trimming video euphorbia right here there's some hydrangeas that are actually blooming, Erin. Ha, huh. Erin thought that there wouldn't be enough sun to get these to bloom. There are buds on all of them. Well, on two of them. And we have some act bloom action here, so I'm happy with that. I still have several containers that I have not touched. I have some impatience and things in the greenhouse that I will probably pop in here, but it's just been such a wild year and crazy spring that there's just some things that had to give. And this is one of them right here. This area though, look at this Winecraft black smoke bush. I need to come in and trim this, this cherry right here, which is loving its life. I've got some yellow yarrow. This is the firefly, oh, for crying out loud. Anyway, we'll put the name on the screen maybe. And then the Miss Violet Budlia. It's looking awesome. And then I'm not gonna touch too much on this area just because we just did a kind of more complete tour of this whole, like, I mean, you can pan over there and like take a look at, how gorgeous that's looking right now. I just love it. It's so like free and so colorful and yet it doesn't look like, I don't know, it doesn't look like a mess to me. Sometimes things can look like that. Um, we also toured this for you as well in that same video. But these containers here we didn't really touch on and they're doing well, um, really full. Again, I need to do deadheading and cutting back. It's just that time of year, look at this. It's catmint and oregano right here, just needs all be cut back. I need to cut back the bloom stalks on the lambs here. I need to deadhead the dahlias, but they're all growing and doing great. We actually ran drip, like I ran drip for the first time this year to this window box. So I tapped into a water line here and came up and over. It's just, it just been so nice. When there's little reservoirs like this, like those are hard to keep happy, especially when they get full sun for most of the day, which this one does. And it gets the brutal sun in the afternoon. And now I don't ever have to do anything except for it gets fertilized and sprayed for budworms uh, once a week, but daily watering is a thing of the past, which is great. Lavender wreath, I just decided to leave it right there because I think it's cute and it's the perfect size. That was a fun day. Uh, so now let's head this direction. Kind of wanted to talk about this space here. I tried those uh, beauty berries, pearl glam maybe. 
I had three of them here and they just, they were chlorotic, they were kind of dying back. I read that they prefer more acidic soil and so I think that's what they finally succumbed to. So we ended up taking those out and you can see, whoa, drip system went in this area <laughs> already. Um, there's still kind of holes from where they came out. So I haven't decided what to put here. Wondering what you guys would put here. I kind of want something that maybe, hmm, I don't know. It can't be something that gets huge because I want her to still be seen. And maybe something that gets like this tall, but it's real airy still. So you can kind of still see the detail down below. I don't know. I, I have some real good opportunity here to do something really neat. And it gets a little bit of morning sun and then it's pretty much filtered shade through the rest of the day. So that's the requirements. Let me know what you would plant there. I'm open for suggestions. Iceberg roses are all coming back into bloom. They're looking really good. As is this bed. You know what? I, I uh, planted the osteospermums in the ground for the first time this year, and they're kind of lulling out in the heat because they are a cool uh, season lover. Um, but you should have seen them. Even just like a couple weeks ago, you could hardly see leaves. They were so full of pink flowers. And they look super healthy. You don't have to deadhead them, but we have been deadheading them just to keep them looking tidy. Um, but they will probably in the next, I'm guessing, when it starts to cool off a little bit, especially at night, um, a little bit more, they'll push a ton more buds and we'll have a beautiful fall display. But I've been really happy with them. Poor Harris has had no attention this year. He still has dead Sempervivums on him. I haven't even pulled him out of his spot. I had planned on pulling him up and just tucking some new moss in him so he was at least just green. But there he sits, still looks cute. We have the incredible, or the Invincible, Invincible Ruby hydrangeas. Uh, they were, they bloomed gorgeous. Uh, they were not getting enough water. In fact, this whole area, I don't know what the deal is. I think one, at some point during a winter, we need to, when everything's kind of died back, we need to pull all the drip and do it again. Um, I did not know about doing a grid system when I did this bed. And what it is, is I've got an access on this side. The drip tube comes in. And this entire bed all the way over to the fireplace access path, it's one big loop-de-loo all the way to the center. And it never connects back to itself. So the amount of like the flow, it just doesn't work. And some areas don't get very much water. Like these two hydrangeas are happy. The one on the end's happy. These two wilt every single day, even though I've got two two gallon per hour emitters running to them. It's just the water is not getting to them. Um, and they looked really good, like in fresh and beautiful color until the heat hit and the water issues started becoming a problem. Um, but the plant them, plants themselves are still healthy. The leaves are looking good. Um, so I'm hopeful that we can get those issues worked out. And it's just one of those things, you know. Everything else in this area, I'm really happy with. Like just, I always wanna walk through this way because like this is one of my favorite views of the whole garden. I just love all the layering that's in this area, all these beautiful hookahs and hostas. And then you see, you know, jump over, you see this little boxwood hedge right here and the red coleus. I just think it's so pretty. Um, these are North Star boxwoods, which have done really well. I also planted these when they were really tiny. I had one die right up here. And maybe it's because they're being smothered, but well, it's not completely dead. See that? but it's not looking, not looking awesome. So I'll have to address that. But the pink mink clematis are blooming. Uh, this one, not as, like not at all. This one doesn't get as much sun, clearly it's tucked into the back. When we planted these, Aaron was like, these are not gonna bloom, they do not get enough sun. And I told him like, I think they'll bloom a little bit, but I don't even really care. I really want a very delicate looking vine on these trellises because I want to still see them. I don't want it to be a, such a thick vine that we can't see the beauty of the, the, tr the structure that's here. And so this is like having blooms is a bonus to me. Um, so clearly this one's maybe the happiest <laughs> right there. Um, and this one's like kicking it into gear. This one I need to like get free the maple from it. It's like starting to climb. I think it would probably reach up a lot further if I got this out and trained it up, which I need to do. Um, but I'm really happy, happy, happy with these. How much sun do you think these get? Maybe a day, an hour. maybe an hour in the morning and that's it. Um, so anyway, sometimes you can kind of stretch the limits of what you think a plant can do. I planted limettas in here last year and they're doing great. I usually plant annuals right in here and just haven't done it yet. 
Uh, the Ridiculous, I don't know what your guys' experience with coleus is this year, but coleus is just not doing as well as it has in previous years. A couple of factors. Um, we had a super long cold spring, and I think that was the same for a lot of people, and it just, like, it sat forever. Um, mine's also discoloring weird. Like, it's getting green on the edges. I don't know that it's supposed to do that, and it's already blooming, which is not typical. So it's been, like, cold to all of a sudden really hot. It's still beautiful. Um, I have not baited for earwigs. I use a bug and slug killer for that, and you can tell that's what actually damages our coleus. So I just picked up more at the garden center. I ran out and that's why I hadn't uh, baited yet. So I'll just sprinkle some of that in here and then the uh, damage will start clearing up. But Audrey White Gomfrina, there's some buried treasure red strawberries there and the incredible hydrangeas. They are beautiful and they are not struggling. Like every year they have struggled in the past. I think we have actually have the water figured out in this section and they were big, beautiful, why, oh, Aaron said he has it running twice a day. That's just what it takes for hydrangeas in our area, I guess. Um, these are protected though, like they are protected in the morning. They get this little slice of sun and then they're protect protected for the most part in the afternoon. The ones on the end get a little bit more sun, uh, but they were just bright white for the longest time. And then they kind of age a little bit to this green chartreuse color, which I adore. I think it's beautiful. And then I mixed in some Wicked Witch Coleus here. I love this view right here. You can look through, see the Incredibles, the Wicked Witch, the um, Lemon Zest Roses, and the Meteor Shower Verbena. I think it's so beautiful. Also, the Chinook Caladiums are really starting to stool out and thicken up. I'm really happy with that. They were very small when we planted them. And Caladiums are really suited for southern climates. And we talked to the, uh, the guy who actually, was he the breeder or the, the owner of Classic Caladiums or something like that? Anyway, uh, we talked to him and he was like surprised when he found out we were at Eastern Oregon in high desert. He was like, I'm sending Caladium bulbs where? Like, are they even gonna grow for you? So I'm calling this a win. I think they're looking really good. Hey, Cheddar. The Munstead Lavender still looks good. It, I haven't cut it back. Usually we do a midsummer shear so that it can come back a little bit. So we'll probably be doing that here pre pretty soon. Uh, my Japanese maple, this winter, it just didn't, didn't survive. That happens sometimes. You can see that the first real viable branch is here. I might just lop the top off and try to create a new leader from that one that's still alive because the undergrowth is still really pretty. And honestly, I have nothing else to put in this space right now, so I may as well give it a try. Anyway, I left it for the longest time because I thought like maybe, maybe it'll push new growth. It just hasn't. Wanted to go down the west side here just to take another look at the new pathway. So the bricks that were put in this spring looking really good. I love this so much. I think it's like the perfect scale. The circle's the perfect size. The urn's the perfect scale. I love having the lavender right here. And that was fairly new addition this past week. Um, and then we'll start filling in. I'm not in too much of a hurry though. I feel like, like we've already done, there's a lot of projects going on. And so I feel like at this point, especially when it's so hot, we kind of like power down for a little bit in terms of planting. And then we'll pick it back up when it cools off a little bit. But I trimmed this container up a bit in that video and look at the osseo already. Like it's looking really good and it's, um, it had like a few blooms on it, but it's still full of buds and they're starting to open, which is really exciting. This gets full afternoon sun plus the reflective heat from the house. It's pretty brutal. And we are back up in this garden here. This corner always makes me very happy, especially this year. I uh, bought this maple at the garden center. It was in one of those big wood boxes. It had been there for a long time and it was unhappy. It was not a happy camper. It needed to be planted. So I thought, well, I'll take it home and plant it. And it looked bad for a lot of years. Like, I think I planted that the first season we were here. This is the first year it actually looks good, I think. It's very architectural. <laughs> I had to do some trimming to trim out some dead, but I really, I think it's a beautiful maple. And then I have the black pearl hookera and the um, acaris called Ogon, the grassy texture down below. I think it's real pretty. This is my pink lemonade lemon. 
the poor thing's having some struggles. We just moved it out of the sun porch. It got, it dried down way too much. Um, and it's also had a bout of aphids. And so between those two things, I thought, well, let's just pop it out here. I'm gonna go get some feet for it so it sits up off of the dirt. Um, and I'm gonna treat it, trim it back, and just let it sit out here for the rest of the season. And then we'll move it back in later. It's still, it has some lemons on it. So one of those things, this is a pretty little view right here with the bench, which is totally unusable. That's only there for decoration. The previous owners of the house, right before we moved in, they had a yard sale um, and I bought it for 10 bucks from them. And so it just stayed here and it lives on in the garden. Uh, we've recently cut back perennials and that's why there's a whole bunch of empty space. There's some, uh, there's some salvia. Um, there were Ju the Jupiter's beard in here, lemon balm um, that we've cut back but it's, it's a very lush feeling area, I think just because it's so shaded. We don't have a lot of that, not a lot of deep shade in our garden. So just a couple more areas I wanna take a look at. The moon garden, which I have decided is no longer gonna be a moon garden. I've learned something about myself this year. I've learned that I only like all white gardens in du like dusk or shade or uh, not even an overcast. It looks too dry to me. We have so much bright sun and so much heat here and the white just looks dry and I don't like it. So next year we'll be adding some color and it makes me really excited. So I actually halted planting. I'm like, I'm not gonna plant anymore in this area. I tried out enough white and I'll leave all the white perennials. I haven't planted it so heavy that I need to take anything out so I can add color. And that's the beauty you guys of trying something like this out with annuals because then I'm not, I don't feel as committed. I feel like I can try this out and get my feet wet, see if it feels like it's me. And if it's not, then I can easily change it the next year. And that might mean different things based on the area. Like this is a pretty large area to try something like that out in, but you can see how much area I did not plant. It's still very, very open, but everything's doing well. I mean, so that's good. I haven't really planted. We took the uh, crab apple out here um, because it was not looking good. And this fall, we're gonna have the driveway is gonna go straight out through this area. So all this stuff's gonna move anyway. Um, the fence will be gone. This power pole will be gone. It'll change pretty dramatically right on the end here. Um, but the Superbina, this is a whiteout. Amazing. More skyrocket penicetum. We have some alyssum in here and lambs here, which was new. Uh, the vertigo penicetum. Also my uh, pin, is it pinpoint blue cypress? They are starting to come out of whatever happened to them. I had to remove one because it just got so bad. Um, and they started to brown in the center and I thought for sure I could clean these out actually. I thought for sure um, it's just too much water in this area, but they are starting to push new growth that looks healthy. So we might be out of the woods and they might survive, which is exciting. This is the Firefly Diamond Yarrow I planted in a video for you guys earlier on. Look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful this is with that. They're just like the Daisy Mays are amazing. These have been blooming since I planted them and they were forced to bloom early because they were for a show that got canceled <laughs> this spring, like everything did. So we got our hands on them, got them planted and then we've just been keeping up on deadheading. And when you deadhead this variety, oftentimes it'll just keep throwing blooms all summer and you won't have a time where you have to shear the daisy all the way back, which is not typical of traditional daisies. So I'm super happy with this plant. Like if you have the time to deadhead it, do it because it looks so good. Um, this is a, the Gonfo Carpus, the type of milkweed I planted this, this spring in a video. It's huge, look at this, it's taller than I am. And it's got these little, uh, little bloom things, whatever, I don't know. You guys can Google the common name of this plant and you'll see what, uh, what it produces. So Gonfo Carpus is the name. Um, and it makes me excited. These are an annual though. Uh, this is a Calamagratus called Avalanche, maybe? Not Oberdum. I think that one has yellow. Anyway, perennial grass. And then the Whirlwind White Scavola. This was a, uh, an experiment to see how Scavola does in the ground and it apparently likes it. So take note, that's a great one for in-ground planting. And then the Limelight Hydrangea Standard was one that I transplanted from a, an area where we had a new AC unit put in. Uh, it wasn't like in its spot anyway. It was covered in spider mites last year, completely covered. Um, and then 
it so it never really bloomed it didn't get enough sun it wasn't happy where it was and when i dug it out it had a tiny root ball on it and i thought oh man i'm kind of putting it right out where it gets full on wind full sun all day long and look at it so happy it's happy i'm happy um, also the instant karma elderberries here <laughs> it's a little wild um, i think i'm going to do some hard pruning on these next year because i want to try to keep them a little more a little more tidy but i feel like now that i'm not going to go for the whole moon garden thing it'll be okay um i just yeah it just i wasn't nothing was jiving for me with the whole moon garden concept i have also learned that i don't like spider flowers not a fan i think they look messy and maybe it's just me but we all have those things right like we plant something and we're like oh it's just uh, i don't know and maybe I'm not like taking care of it properly. I don't have a lot of experience, but it's had color the whole time. Um, and so that's good, but it just, this right here, just to me looks a little bit, just not my taste. You could probably pair it with other things, maybe underplant, underplant it. Oh, that was a delphinium I just stepped on, excellent. Maybe if you underplanted it to like kind of hide the bottom, it would look better. Anyway, just kind of, learning a lot about myself this year. I do love the look of the urns though, even with all the white, I think that's a beautiful look. Something for next year, my takeaway from this year is to know that like, I could go all out with white in containers or in small areas. I think I will love it. Next year, I think I will plant these to where I can still see the urn because I miss seeing the beauty of this urn. These are the Esplanade urns from Unique Stone and I just adore these pots. I think these are my favorite pieces I always say that about every piece. This, these are one of my favorite pieces in our entire yard. And it was a big decision for me. It took me a long time to decide what base with what urn. And I didn't know, cause I had to order them separately. I didn't know if they were gonna look good together. And when we got them put together, I was like, that's perfect. I don't know how, how that ended up being so perfect, but I just love them and I wanna see them a little bit more. All right. I, I planted pumpkins and acorn, acorn squash in between these, the pumpkins came up, the acorn squash did not. The acorn squash seeds I'd had for like eight years. So it might just be like, maybe I didn't store them properly or maybe they were just too old. The Lumina pumpkins, I don't think I'm gonna actually get pumpkins from them, but they actually sprouted, so that's a good thing. And then let's just head down to the end. Oh, also our neighbors, the house is like coming right along. And I gotta be honest, like I thought it was gonna make me more upset, we knew we knew when we bought this house that this whole subdivision was going in. So it's not, it's not a surprise. We knew it was gonna happen. Um, so it's not something I can like get upset about because I knew about it. I thought it would make me a little more bummed out to see houses going up. It surprisingly hasn't bummed me out. And the construction noise has been surprisingly like, I think I'm getting used to it. It used to bother me a lot. And now it only bothers me a little bit. And only like if I'm like extra annoyed that day or something, it's like kid noises. Before when I would hear kids like being real wild and loud and stuff, I'd be like, you know, like my peace outside is being ruined. I was kind of like the old lady, stay off my grass. And now with Benjamin, I kind of, like I don't even notice it. And it's almost kind of a happy sound and I like to hear it. So I'm also excited about who's moving in there and that makes a huge difference. Anyway, so you'll be seeing that in the view for a while until these arborvitas put on more growth, which they should grow. They get 10 to 15 feet tall, I'm about, five four so they'll get significantly significantly bigger and we won't see any of that anymore so it won't be it won't be long okay so i need to stake this tree real bad i uh, planted it out here it's a little bit too weak and i need to get a longer stake and stake it up and stake this whole branch up this is the leader and it's totally like trying to be a weeping tree and it's not supposed to be so that's on my list to do um, you know what, I think we will kind of hop out here. I plan on doing a vegetable garden video here soon. So we'll tour you through that um, here, probably in the next week or so. Limelight hydrangea standard right here, full sun all day on both sides of the vegetable garden. Just amazing. The Ambridge rose, roses right down here. There's liatris back there, the daisy maize, the colette roses are coming back into bloom. You can almost not get into the vegetable garden. I, can almost, I can't really bring myself to shear them because <laughs> they're so full of bloom on the ends of their branches right now, but I'll take care of that soon so we can go in and out easier. 
I just wanted to kind of maybe end right over here. I wanted to show you the hosta garden because I think it's looking pretty good. So we planted this up this spring, lemon coral sedum around the exterior, cascade white angelonia, and then just a smattering of different kinds of hostas. Now they do need a little bit of grooming, which I um, is easy to do. And I knew that this was gonna happen out here because these plants get full on west wind. That's the way our wind comes. And we have mentioned several times that like about once a week we get a massive windstorm. We've had one this spring where it did 60 mile an hour gusts and these are not protected by anything. So they get a little bit tattered. Um, I'm hoping too they're less prone to that once they're a little bit more established, but they also get quite a bit more sun than I thought. <laughs> the day we planted these, I actually brought Aaron out here and I'm like, look at this bed. Like it's in full sun in the, <laughs> in the late part of the afternoon. And I just didn't even realize it. I need to pay more attention. I usually get irritated at Aaron for saying, is that going to get enough sun or is that going to get too much sun? But I really probably should listen a little bit <laughs> closer. Okay, Aaron just told me he switched to watering twice a day in this area, which probably has helped as well. We were having to supplement water. The Angeloni is there um, because they were wilting a bit in the afternoon, and I haven't had to do that. I don't think Chris has done it either for a while, so I think they're getting enough water at this point. So anyway, that kind of looped us right back around. Oh, we should look at the hydrangeas in the very back, just real quick. The Firelight Hydrangea Hedge is looking really good. Like we are dealing with chlorosis, I have showed you that or I've talked about it um, before, but they're so full of color and so gorgeous. Um, it is funny, everything we plant in this bed starts out tall, 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 medium, medium, tiny. <laughs> so it's like this graduation of size. I think the reason for that is because we have a scarlet curls willow right here and I think the root system is maybe just sucking all the nutrients and moisture from this end area. I did put extra emitters on here at the end of last year, which, you know, I haven't really seen a whole lot of rebound and growth or anything, but um, overall I'm really happy. And it's nice to eliminate some annual planting areas. I like that I don't feel compelled to fill this whole area with annuals now. Um, and that's something I kind of want to continue doing so that we don't have quite as much planting every single spring, even though annuals are fun, um, but we have a lot of areas where we plant them. So anyway. I'm really happy with these. And then I'll just swing this way so you can just kind of see. I'm not going to go through this whole area because I'm sure this video is just super, super long. We've not done really anything extra in this area, but the fluffy arb is doing great. Everything is looking really happy right now, which makes me, makes me happy when it's so hot this time of year. It's, sometimes it's hard to look out and see things suffering. And I don't feel like we're seeing that quite as much. I feel like we're dialing in the water. We're dialing in the, the issues. If we always have different things that come up and crop up every year. So we're always learning and trying to adjust, but I think we're, we're getting it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tour. I hope that you saw something that inspired you. Um, thank you for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.